ようになる Hello. Hi. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome to your new favorite place on the internet. My name is Bella. And um, it's been a hot second. I mean, you've probably already seen the video where I say this same exact thing. I don't know. Like, hi. How have you guys been doing? I've just... Not the helicopter. <laughs> um... I've been gone too long. Somebody sent a helicopter to check on me. I'm fine, I promise. Like, not really, but like, it's okay. But, but not really, but like... I did just record a video, but I feel like vlogs, like just sitting down and vibing, it's just a different vibe. So I also wanted to start a vlog, even though I don't really have anything else to say at the moment. I just really wanted to talk to you guys because it's literally been such a hot second let me just check how long it's been it has been 46 days and five hours since i posted my last video which was a reading vlog lots of reading and annotating and life update so that life update is um the one where i talk about my injury and how i'm like yeah so like the next couple of videos are going to be filmed from my bedroom and then i just disappeared <laughs> It wasn't in my 2023 bingo board to just leave YouTube, but it just had to happen. It had to happen because I had to, you know, get some distance and just reevaluate how I wanted my channel to be, how, what I wanted to do with it, who I wanted to be in this channel as well, because I don't know, like I just kept finding different roadblocks and I kept on feeling discouraged and like an imposter and like nobody actually cared and like there's just such there was so much negative talk about myself to myself from myself and it was just not a healthy place to be and i was like okay i need to change this because this is not sustainable i don't want my life to feel like this anymore so like i just needed to take a step back i'm really sorry that i just didn't say anything about it like i just literally left but i it, I, it was literally quite impossible <laughs> I've been struggling a lot with feeling productive and feeling good about myself every day because since the healing process of this injury is quite I wouldn't say it's I mean it is like it is a pretty lonely experience because obviously nobody is experiencing the same pain that you are or like nobody's you know going through the physical therapy sessions nobody's going you know what I mean? Like healing, especially with physical injuries, is a very solitary and lonely experience. Like obviously you have the physical therapy coaches and you have your friends cheering you on if you're lucky, but um, it still feels like a very isolating experience because, you know, it's just really hard to explain. I. I don't I don't think I'm doing a good job at it, but um, for a very long time, I just felt very isolated and very I don't know like sad bro like i was just sad <laughs> i think that even though i'm still going through that um i do have an incredible support system in my family and in my friends as well like i've been so incredibly blessed with such a spectacular set of people around me in my life it's just it's been you know <laughs> Like, it's taken me a hot second to kind of get used to this new 
era in my life, I guess. So I think that 45 days, 46 days and five hours is more than enough of a break from YouTube. Like I literally just miss you guys so much. I wanna get back on the grind, but I'm not gonna call it a grind anymore. I just, I wanna go back to creating and having a creative outlet where I can just talk to you guys about literally anything that I want. And I wanna keep building this community and keep reaching different people and making different connections. Just, I want to do it all. <laughs> I've started to once again, get excited about making content. And I've been feeling inspired and like happy and excited like what is another word for excited i've been feeling alexa what is the synonym for excited good afternoon bella the synonyms for excited can be nervous enthusiastic or delighted synonyms are words that have similar meanings Stop. to excited but they that. have their own characteristics I and know can that. be used can you, interchangeably you to, in some as i was saying i've just been really enthusiastic about coming back to youtube and hopefully you guys I mean, yeah, like hopefully you guys are excited for me to be back as well. I know that's like a big ask because I have been gone on YouTube and just in the internet. On the internet in general, it's easy to forget about people that don't post regularly because there's so many other people. You're like, oh, okay, whatever, let's move on. So for those of you who stayed and for those of you who were cheering me on, thank you so much for your support. It literally, like getting those random comments on a random day, even though I've been gone for so long, like I'm missing you. I hope you're doing wonderful and happy 2024. Like that really, like it meant a lot. So to the people who took the time out of their very busy days and busy lives to send me a comment or a message hoping that I'm okay. You're literally an angel sent down from heaven directly to me. So thank you and I hope that 2024 is treating you kindly. All of that to say, welcome to a new reading vlog. I don't know what I'm going to be doing this week. It's Monday, so I have quite a lot of days to figure it out. I have a couple of exercises that I need to do now for my daily therapy. But after that, I do, hold it. I do have to read 30 Pages of Demons by Dostoevsky, which is my current read. And I have to get to page 336. This doesn't look like a lot, but I promise, sometimes it feels like 60 pages. And it's been a slow process, but as I mentioned in my previous video, it is picking up especially because now they're introducing like this feature, not feature, but like this new thing, I guess, of secret societies and like cult behavior, which I find very intriguing. So I'm very enthused about that. <laughs> not me trying to use different words, but like it just doesn't, it doesn't come off as natural. I'm very enthused. Like, what is that? Who speaks like that? Literally no one. And then, I might go a little bit crazy and play Sims. This is, listen, okay. I, ever since I got a new computer, yes I did, um, I have been downloading these different games. And of course, I've always been interested in the Sims, but I've never had like a good enough computer to play it. But now that I do, I, of course, that was one of the very first games that I downloaded. I'm just like struggling a lot because that's the Sims opening up, I'm so sorry. How do I mute this? <laughs> Alexa, mute yourself. Can you do that? Yeah, I've just been struggling a lot because my sims keep fighting and they keep getting angry and like they're just not happy with their lives and I don't know if that's like mirroring, you know, their owner, like the person who made them, but I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know why they keep getting so upset. Like I give them food, they shower, they have a good job. They have friends, they go to the club and they dance and drink and eat good food. Like I don't get it. And it's so frustrating because like I, I'm supposed to play games to like, you know, distract myself from my real life. But then why is my sim life mirroring my real life? I don't like it. But anyways, I'm trying, I created a different character because I was just sick of the first one. She was like, she's, she was just very problematic and very toxic. <laughs> So I just kind of, you know, I started from scratch. I made a different character. Her name is, what's your name? Oh, her name is Zelda, obviously, because I've been obsessed with Zelda. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let her discover what she likes. This is so stupid. I don't know what I'm, why I'm talking to you guys about this, but anyways, I've been struggling with Sims. Um, 
so yeah, it, it hasn't been as fun as I thought it would be. It's more stressful than anything. And I've also been playing Genshin Impact because I finally have a good computer to use it. And I also suck at it. Like I used to be so good at Genshin Impact when I played on my phone because it was literally just using my thumbs. But now I have like a keyboard and a mouse and it's just, it's very overwhelming. I'm not used to computer gaming. And obviously this is just like my first two weeks. So I'm going to need some time to get used to it, but it's just like a lot, okay? And I wish it was easier, but it's not. I've also been trying out different games that are hopefully going to be a bit more friendly. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I need video games to stop being stressful. I've also tried cozy video games, but like I get bored of them after a while. Like I've tried Cult of the Lamb and Mail Time and Lemon Cake and like they were cute for the first maybe 10 hours, but then afterwards it's like, it's just the same thing over and over again. So like, is there something else that we can do? I don't know. I, I'm just looking for different games. I did download Kingdom Hearts and I am replaying it, even though I'm like stuck in a certain part, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> Because I've played Kingdom Hearts so much, like I think I played it, Kingdom Hearts 1, I've played it maybe three or four times, but obviously that was way back when, like it's been over maybe 10 years, maybe? No, nine years? I don't know. It's been a long time since I played Kingdom Hearts, but the very first intro to the game, obviously I've done it so much and it's just very boring and it kind of like drags because it's obviously like a tutorial and you have to fight all these different characters and like learn different buttons but i obviously already know these buttons and this is a non-skippable thing that you have to do and now i have to build a raft i need to go on a race with riku and it's like i don't want to do it i don't want to do it so i've just been procrastinating kingdom hearts as well like girl i'm running out of options at this point so yeah <laughs> Sorry, I just went on a huge rant about the video games that I've been playing. I hope you don't mind. And if you have any recommendations on any video games that you would like to watch me play, I'm all ears because I am also looking into opening my Twitch account, like, you know, just stream for you guys so that you can see me actively lose my mind on live and we can chat about it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that would be fun. But anyways, I think now it's exercise time. Yes, it is now 4 p.m. So I need to get the exercises done so then I can read and then I can, oh my God, wait, before we leave, can I tell you guys about the K-drama that I was watching? Because like, it's one of those K-dramas that is so healing and it's literally exactly what you were looking for. Oh my God, no, my camera, not, don't do that. Please remind me, obviously you can't remind me, but please remind me to tell you about the K-drama that I'm watching, which is called Welcome to Sandalri. I just finished it and I cried because it was a very healing experience. If you like K-dramas like Hometown Cha 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 and another one that I'm not remembering the name of, but it's also like a small town and they go there because they need to heal. Como que se llama? Oh my God. Um, Oh my god, it's like everybody, liberation notes, yes. If you like K-dramas like that, you're really going to like Welcome to Sandalri. And I love, like, the, it was everything about it, okay? Like the chemistry, like the, the stories that were happening, the people, the things. <laughs> I was a mess watching Welcome to Sandalri and I would 100% recommend it. I would talk about it more, but my camera is flashing because I have been talking for too long apparently. So I will definitely catch you guys on the next clip, but I hope you guys enjoy this very first vlog of 2024. I love you so much and I will talk to you guys later.
this shelf and I mean it's not really reorganization it's just putting the books back where they were but it's still a lot <laughs> obviously one shelf is not enough for 30 plus thick volumes so I've really just had to try my best to fit them as best as I can. <laughs> I would love to have a couple of these volumes on display, but I just literally cannot. <laughs> I literally cannot, my dude. Um, but it is so satisfying to see all of these volumes just together. It's just really, there's just something about it that makes me so happy. This volume, incredible. This one has the Paramount War and it's literally where everything goes down. Oh my goodness, like I did not take my eyes off of this book until I read it front to back. It was insanity. There's so many good panels as well that I just, I didn't vlog about because I wasn't vlogging. <laughs> so many things that I would have loved to show you guys. Maybe one day. Let's see. And then I don't have any more space <laughs> to stack, so now, this is where Tetris comes in. I just put these up here. And then obviously I leave like a little space here so that I can put Chopper. Hi. Hi King. And then these, I fight along. I hit you, I'm so sorry. Okay, I did not mean that. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> and of course, Zorro, Robin. I don't think I've shown you guys this thing that my friend sent me. I'm so sorry I hit you again. I promise I'm not doing it on purpose. It's like this golden just dollar. It's just really beautiful and really shiny and on one side it has the crew and then on the other it has Robin and look at her like oh my god living her absolute best life. It's not the tidiest of shelves but uh, it makes me happy. And I feel like at the end of the day, that's the most important part. So there we go. Now, I think we should put the other books that I have read as well back in their shelves. So let's do that. This is how my shelf is looking at the moment. This came with a special edition that I got of, what is this? Heaven Officials Blessing Volume 8. So yeah, this was a special edition and it came with so many goodies. I unboxed it for my Patreons. Like for example, this poster. Oh my God, wait, can we? There we, okay, that's a lot, okay. <laughs> it came with this stunning poster, which is probably my favorite thing. Obviously this is Hua Chang and Xie Liang and they are obviously living their best lives, okay. And then we have this other poster which includes more characters. But of course, Hua Chang and Xie Liang are like front, front, front. You know what I mean? Oh, I love oh wait, no, this is Hua Chang. So, okay, all right, my mistake. But we still have Hua Chang and Xie Liang in the same frame, which is what matters to me. And apart from the posters, we also got postcards. It's literally just postcards with the covers of the books, which if I do say so myself, belong in an art gallery. Like these book covers are one of the most stunning pieces of art that I will ever own in my entire life. Um, I literally cannot choose a favorite because they're all beautiful. I did already, <laughs> I pasted the main, like the first book cover in my wall, on my wall because it was just so gorgeous. Like the use of colors, I will never get over that. Somebody's just arrived. Uh, this one, am I right ladies? Am I right? Are you even focused? It's, my camera is so scandalized it won't even focus on what I'm trying to show you. But yeah, so it came with a lot of goodies. It came with stickers, but that's not what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you where this book belongs. So let's just go back so that I can squeeze that in. As you can see, <laughs> I have some other Dan May novels. These are literally in Chinese, so I cannot read them, but they are still very, very gorgeous. I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this one. I read this on an airplane. <laughs> I still have the tickets. And not me using this as a bookmark for this, yeah. So, yeah, I read this and I actually really, really liked it. It's about like 
this really pure and innocent character that believes in the good in people and then we have this guy who has just given up on humanity and he's convinced that everybody is evil and you just have to push them enough for them to show their true colors so when they meet he's like on the brink of death he's like okay I can change him, but for the worst. So yeah, I still haven't read the rest of the books in this series, but I really enjoyed it. So I'm not, I'm like, I'm not in a book buying van, but I also cannot buy books at the moment. So. I mean, I feel like that's the literal definition of a book buying van, but anyways. Yeah, so now we're back to the shelf that I'm still not 100% convinced about, but I do have like my little Japanese literature corner. I do only own three of them. Well, actually now I, oh, excuse me, <laughs> now I own four. So there we go. And I've loved all of these books. Like this made me cry, this made me cry, this made me cry. This one didn't make me cry, but it's still like a really gorgeous story about just like a collection of short stories of different people that all find themselves in need of going to the library. And because of this wonderful library and librarians that give you book recommendations, their lives change. So I, yeah, this one has a special place in my heart. I know that this doesn't make sense, but I just don't really have a shelf for graphic novels because I don't have that many of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one here. Can you? Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't know where else to put it. Um, and then I have like, oh my God, excuse me. And then I have like these two random movies, Studio Ghibli movies that I also don't have anywhere else to put, but I do love them with my entire heart. If you've never watched House Moving Castle, or if you've never watched Grave of the Fireflies, I would 100% recommend both of these, even though they are going to tear your heart apart. This one more than Howl. Obviously, trigger warning for so many things, death, war, um, hunger, starvation, <laughs> um, death of a family member. It's like a lot, okay? But then this one, it's a bit less traumatizing and a bit more romantic. So maybe start with Howl's if you've never <laughs> seen a Studio Ghibli film before because Grave of the Fireflies is going to ruin your life. And then Dr. Stone, which is the last book that I have to shelf today. It goes up here. Like, can you come with me? I'm sorry, I'm gonna move you. It's okay, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> yes, so Dr. Stone goes here, right next to my Junji Ito collection and my all you need is kill volume. I literally don't have anywhere else to put it, so it just goes there, okay? It fits, it makes sense. Jack does not go there. I don't know why that was there, I'm sorry. I haven't been here in a long time. This is how my manga shelf is looking, for anyone that's wondering. I did add like these manga panels of Demon Slayer because I just thought that this shelf could use a little bit of decoration, and I love how it looks. Like I love it so much that I wanna do it with every single shelf but I don't know how that's gonna work out, so we'll just see. But for now, like, this is my favorite corner because it looks so good. Like, it looks insane. We just have iconic panels that I loved and that I wanted to include. And yeah, maybe I should do that with Spy Family as well so that I can just complete this shelf. This is the control <laughs> to light up the lights. But anyways, I'm gonna go now, goodbye.
Hello, my friends. Hi, it's been a couple of days. It's no longer Monday. Um, what is it? It's Thursday. Hi, I don't know why. I, how do I not know what day it is? But hello, hi. A very disorienting start to this clip. I do have some reading updates if you're interested. And also, thank you so much for reminding me. I have to tell you about the K-drama that I was watching, which I absolutely loved and that I would 100% recommend to you guys, which is Welcome to Samdari. I loved every single episode of this show and I was invested in each of the characters' lives. Like not even, not only the two main characters, but also the side characters, like the sisters and the friends. And I was invested in finding a happy ending for them. And that usually doesn't happen with me and K-dramas. Like I'm mostly interested in the main couple, obviously, but with this, K-drama that was just so cozy and it just felt like you were being hugged while you were watching this show It was so comforting. It was so lighthearted and beautiful and like this journey of self-discovery and also You know just holding on to the people that love you and that you love it was just I really need more K-dramas like that that feel so real and that are so down to earth like I need more K-dramas like that and I'm also watching another one that's called Marry My Husband it's not over yet, it's still ongoing it's based on a very popular webtoon apparently and it's like this girl who gets married to this guy who is extremely problematic and she's sick, she has I think it's liver cancer or like some type of cancer and he, like the husband, ends up, this is not a spoiler, the husband ends up killing her to get her insurance money. And <laughs> it's like really messed up, but as soon as she dies, it's like she goes back 10 years into the past. And now she has like a second chance at life and she can like, you know, make better decisions and make sure that she doesn't end up with that guy. And she also just starts to realize how much she's been manipulated not only by her soon-to-be husband but also by her supposed best friend and so now she's just focusing on building a better life for her and not getting killed by the people she thought loved her the most it's definitely not lighthearted. it's not cozy it's not comforting it's very high stakes and very like it makes me really angry because it's this woman that basically does not respect herself and she constantly lets people walk all over her just to keep the peace and characters like that characters that are so what's that word when they're like very passive and they just accept everything that life throws at them i really don't like characters like that i am all for empowering this woman and hopefully this main character starts acting up like in a good way. Hopefully she starts realizing and just, you know, snaps out of this mindset because it's really infuriating and really, what's that word? Frustrating, yes, thank you. So that's how I've been doing in the K-drama front, but now I do have some reading updates. I haven't read as much as I wanted to, but since this one is a buddy read, I have been pretty much consistent with the amount of pages that I've been reading every day. I'm currently, well, I've officially reached page 400. So in the span of Monday to now, I have read 400, no, I have read 100 pages, which is great. I wish, <laughs> I wish I could say the same about the actual book. Like I wouldn't say this book is great. Just from what I've read so far, I'm literally halfway through and I still don't think this is Dostoevsky's best work. I don't think anybody's ever said that, but just let the record show Isabella or Bella. Hi, my name's Bella. I am not enjoying. I, I am. <laughs> it's a weird reading experience because like I am enjoying it, but not as much as I thought I was. So now I have to like fix my expectations and just not you know like it's just i have to go through something okay i i need to sit down with myself and come to terms with the fact that this is not going to be the next crime and punishment for me this is just going to be demons um and that's okay like this is on me i should have just gone into this book not expecting it to be as good as crime and punishment um i was expecting it to be better than the brothers carry my ass off and it is that it is better than the brothers carry my ass off but i just i really hope it's it keeps getting better because it's slowly picking up but it's so slow, <laughs> like it's so slow. And apart from demons, I'm also, this is a reread for me, but 
I did mention how I thought it would be really interesting to reread The Dark Interval by Rilke, Rainer Maria Rilke, because I read this before I got my injury and this is basically a collection of different letters that Rilke wrote to different people. He's just basically helping them understand why these things are happening like the grief that they're feeling and the loss that they have experienced and like this huge negative event in their life and how terribly they're feeling. Rilke is helping them push through that and like explore that pain and not necessarily run away from it. The first time that I read this, nothing had happened in my life that I needed much counseling on, I guess. And then after I finished this, I was like, oh, this was such a great and beautiful and emotional read, like great collection of letters, really insightful, really beautiful, but none of them like really, you know, hit home for me. And then I started wondering if this book would hit harder now that I've had like this thing happen to me. So I started reading a couple of letters and just reading back on my annotations and things that I underlined the first time around. And oh my goodness, was I correct? Like there are so many phrases and so many lines that the first time that I read it, I like underlined it and I was like, that's cute. But now that I'm rereading it with everything that I've had to experience these last couple of months, I'm like, oh my God, this is literally it. This is what I've been trying to put into words. It's such a comfort because it feels like you're not alone in this experience because obviously this is a very isolating experience, but then Rilke comes and shows you that, you know, it's literally not. <laughs> And he, he just has a very beautiful way of encouraging you to feel this pain and feel this grief. And instead of trying to avoid it or just move past it, he shows you how important it is to like try to talk to your grief and try to understand your pain and try to grow through your pain and not just ignore it. So I don't know, this is a very transformative experience for me and I thought I would share this with you guys because obviously I'm not done reading it. It's very short, but I wanna take it page by page, day by day, and just read this whenever I feel like I need a little reminder that I am not alone in this. It's so crazy to me. Like the impact that a book can have on you depends on the stage of life that you're currently living. Like that is such an obvious statement when you think about it, but I don't know, like I've never really experienced how different a reading experience can be. What am I even saying? I have never read the same book twice so close together and had such a different reading experience. And that is just very shocking to me, like in the best way possible. The first time that I read this, I loved it. I gave it four out of five stars and now I'm reading it and it just feels like a different person is reading it because obviously the book hasn't changed. I'm the person that has changed. Like the reader is no longer the same. You know what? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm saying. I'm so sorry. I think like, I don't know, I'm missing, I... Wow, okay, I'm so sorry. I literally don't know what I'm saying, I think. Like, I know what I'm saying, but I don't think I have the language or communication skills to convey it in a way that you guys understand what's happening up here. So I'm just going to put this down. But anyways, another book. Because obviously, like these books, I'm reading Demons and also The Heart's Invisible Furies. These books are chunky boys, and I'm not going to be finishing them probably anytime soon, but I do feel like that itch of picking up another book just because when I don't want to be feeling existential and when I don't want to read such a heavy type of book, I do want to have more options. I do have the One Piece manga. Not me talking about One Piece and then Luffy comes on. Uh, yeah, I do have the One Piece manga, but I think I think it's time. I'm going to be giving Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation a second try. Oh god. Like, yeah, it's gonna happen. I read it once. I truly did not have a good experience, but here's to second chances. Maybe in 2024, I'm going to be giving books that I've previously DNF'd a second chance just to see how that goes. It does have some stunning illustrations. Like, come on now, that's gorgeous. But um, I am hesitantly excited to give this a second chance because two of my friends really, really enjoyed this. So it's like, okay, maybe 
once again, maybe the reader has changed. Like the book obviously stays the same, but maybe now that I've read more of these types of novels, I'll be more open to this type of narrative and story and characters and whatever. So yeah, new year, literally new me. So, <laughs> so I am going to be picking up Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. Probably not this week because I do want to try and finish at least one of the books that I'm reading before I start a fourth one, but... Yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys because I know that a lot of you are going to be very excited about this update. I know that a lot of you were rooting for me to give it a second chance and I listened. I listened to you guys. So there we go. Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. I am now... I have a couple of things that I need to get done because I need to finish editing this vlog, the one that you're watching right now. I also need to do more exercises. I need to read the 30 pages of today. Like so many things need to happen but it's good because i'm feeling good i'm feeling inspired i'm feeling motivated i'm feeling productive which is something that i haven't felt in so long um so i'm kind of scared to like jinx it but i like i've been having a good day for like the past three days and three consecutive good days hasn't happened to me in a very long time so i'm like hesitantly optimistic so i hope you guys are also having a good day and if you're not hopefully this vlog helped you forget a little bit about your problems and issues and brought a smile to your face i don't know should i end the vlog here i really don't know because like i think i should end the vlog here because it just feels right okay it feels right yeah i'm not gonna push it i think i'm going to end the vlog here so i just wanted to thank everyone for watching and i really do hope you enjoyed this was the very first reading vlog of 2024 and it just feels really exciting to be back here sharing my reading updates and what i'm currently watching and what i'm currently loving so i really hope you guys enjoyed like i really really do let me know in the comments below how you've been doing what are you currently reading what have you been up to if there's any type of content or anything that you want to see me do please leave it down below because i would love to deliver on your wishes your wishes are my command oh wait before i leave i do need to tell you <laughs> um just in case you forgot or if you haven't been here for a while i do have a patreon and i have been pretty active over there there are a couple of unboxings vlogs if you're interested in seeing what i was like for the past 50 days so i do have a couple of videos over there if you're interested and if you would like to support me outside of youtube obviously whatever you want to do i am so okay with that but i thought i would let you know we do weekly reading sprints we do readathons and reading challenges we have some really exciting things planned for 2024 so if that's something that you're interested in the link is down below as always i would love to have you join my army of premium simpers i haven't said that in so long okay wait i love you guys so very much thank you so much for sticking until the end it really means the world to me and i will definitely be seeing you next time i cannot wait actually so yes bye hey jimmy you nice keep going